let's start with how to begin. So first, before we begin diving into this, I just need to say, if you are, you know, thinking about changing to a pulp food plant-based lifestyle, that I need to be, I would be remiss if I didn't say to you, if you're dealing with diabetes or heart disease, like hypertension, that you need to be very careful in monitoring what's happening to your body because in as little as 10 days, your body can change. And so this is um, Dr. Lori Marvis. She is, she did this study um, that is gonna be coming out in the movie. We're gonna be showing this in May at the uh, Dennis Theater, the Cape Cinema at May 7th at seven o'clock at night and hope you can come to that because it's gonna be amazing, this movie. And we're trying to get the director and his wife, Kim, Campbell, in my humble opinion, she has the best, absolutely most amazing cookbooks out there, okay? Um, she has, there's Plant Pure Nation, Plant Pure Kitchen, and then they, she just came out with Plant, Plant Pure Comfort Food. So amazing cookbooks. And what I love about her cookbooks is that she uses food that you would normally find in your kitchen, you know, as opposed to that one weird spice that you're going to use in one recipe and never use again. She doesn't do that. So, um, but... Here's the problem is most doctors are not trained in nutrition. So it's kind of a conundrum. It's a mixed problem to have because when you do consume a whole food plant-based lifestyle, your health can change. Your body chemistry will change in 10 days. And so you have to be ready if you're on medications to be able to change that. So you really need to be under, you need to understand what's going to happen to your body and how it's going to change. And you need to be under a doctor's doctors care because your medications are going to need to be adjusted. So this is today, this lecture is just for informational educational advice. It's not for medical advice. So let's just do a recap. What is whole food plant-based? You're eating basically fruits, vegetables, starches. Love my starches. Mm -mm -mm. So, and, and legumes, things like that. So, and what I love about this picture is look at how vibrant the food looks. How, you know, I love to say eating from the rainbow. And when you start to eat from the rainbow, it's amazing how quickly your body can heal. When you're starting to get away from the processed foods, things that are gonna cause inflammation in your body. Okay. So as I mentioned before, when I win Lotto, that's my car. That's what I will be purchasing. And it's going to, the license plate is going to say eat plant. So um, you'll see me driving down six in a blur, you know, hopefully the cops, nobody, you know, I'll fly by them so fast. They won't even know I'm there. So um, kerosene, fantastic fuel. But if you put kerosene, I mean, it runs jet. But if you put kerosene in that car, that car will die. And so will I, I will cry is that's just such a beautiful piece of equipment machine right there. Um, that is just amazing. And that's the same thing that we're doing is when we're putting in eggs, meat, dairy, fish, refined foods, sugars in particular, refined sugars and oils. What, what, what about my, my, my extra virgin olive oil? I, I don't care if it was pressed by virgins on the seventh solstice of the seventh month. It's not good. Okay, it's going to sludge your blood. We talked about that last week. So it's kind of hard to get away from, especially in restaurants when you go out, because they're going to be using a lot of oil. They're going to be using a lot of salt. Okay, neither of which are going to be helping you to achieve your health. They're not there for your health. They're there to make a profit. And they're going to be using foods that are not going to be healthy to you. Okay, so we just need to make that clear. We're starting, and as a matter of fact, our, like literally as soon as this is over, I'm jumping in the car and Zooming, we have a potluck and it's over in South Yarmouth. So if anybody would like to come, please come even if you don't bring food, there's going to be tons of food. It, it always is. Everybody takes home stuff and leftovers and whatever, but there's always tons of food. So if you'd like to come, please do. It's a great group of people. And we're starting a restaurant campaign um, about how we can get restaurants on board. We are now officially a pod for Plant Peer Nation. And if you go on their website, <laughs> we're real. <laughs> we're there. So, all right. Anyway, um, so 
supplements, we talked about this you know, more in depth last week. The really only supplements you should be taking is B12. Everybody should be taking B12. You know, and make sure you have your blood te levels tested for B12. You can do that. Um, the other thing is vitamin D. Most of us living in New England, we don't get out in the sun enough, especially in the wintertime. You're going to be mostly, most likely vitamin D deficient. So you have it checked in your blood work and then do supplement because there's really nothing, no other way that you can get vitamin D except going out into the sun. Okay. So um, but it is better to get it from sunlight if you can that's the best way to do it. So that's just kind of a recap of what we did from last week. So, okay, how do I begin? Well, the first thing I need to talk about is willpower because people say to me, oh my God, you must have so much willpower. Uh, no, I'm the first to go, hi, I'm Jean Schumacher. I'm a food addict and I very much am. And it's real, okay? My husband back there, hi honey, that's my husband. Um, he's not a food addict. You know, he can take a piece of chocolate, break it off a bar, wrap it back up and put it in his desk drawer and come back four weeks later and break off another piece. Uh, no, I will eat that chocolate bar until it's gone. There is no medium in there. It's, that's it. So people say you must have so much willpower. And it's like, no, I don't. I don't. But what I do do is I make sure that I do not put this food that's going to be addictive or things that are not going to be helping me because anything that you put in your mouth, it's either helping or hurting. There's no gray area here, people. There's no gray area. So it's either helping you or hurting you. That's it. So I just try and make sure that what I'm putting into my mouth is not going to be hurting me. So that's the thing. So I just make sure my house is cleaned out because if it's in your house, it's in your mouth, right? Oh, I'm buying these for the grandchildren. Stop it. Stop it. Because you know who's going to be eating that. They might get one and the other 37 are going to you. So yeah, just let's be real about it. If it's in your house, it's in your mouth, okay? So I, my house is my wellness center and I make it so that anything that I eat in my house is not going to hurt me. So I make sure of that. I make sure of that, okay? So you have to understand eating does make us feel better. We have to eat, <laughs> we have to. It's not like an alcoholic that just says no or you trying to cut off cigarettes and you just say no, okay? This is not gonna work that way. And that's the problem. So the eating stimulates this dopamine, right? And it's what we call a pleasure cycle. And there's a book called The Pleasure Trap. And I strongly recommend every person on this planet should read it because it understands why we're so driven to, to go for these high caloric density foods, very processed, ultra, because it's banging what's what I call the pleasure center up here. Ding, 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 ding. Did you ever have something that you're like, oh, that is so good. I got to eat more of that. Oh my God. I can eat that whole bag, and I do, right? They know what they're doing in the food industry. They know what they're doing. So we are hardwired to crave rich foods. Go back 5,000 years. In nature, pop quiz, what would you have found in nature that would have been high in fat? What would you have found? Animals absolutely actually no, because they were eating they were actually eating grass as they were supposed to. So they're going to be very lean. Okay, there's going to be very little fat on them. Okay, so they would have been there for the days you know if you were lucky to catch an animal because they didn't want to be caught. Just saying, you know, and killed and eaten. They didn't want that, so they would have put up a good challenge and a good fight, right? But they weren't. They were lean. Not like today, where you have these big chunks of fat rolled into your steak or whatever. That was not then. What? What else? I heard somebody say something yeah, else. Nuts. nuts. Anything else? Seeds. Anything else? Yeah, you're going like, yeah, no, there wasn't much. <laughs> Olives, if you're in the right place. Avocado, again, if you're in the right place. Coconut, again, if you're in the right place. Because that's not going to be growing in cold climates. 
right? Those, those things, nuts for sure, seeds for sure, okay? So when you found those things in nature, you gorged on them as much as you possibly could. And then you collected all the other nuts and brought them into your cave and stored them there because that meant the difference between surviving and not surviving. Any little extra fat that you had on your body would have helped you to get through the winter months because there was no stop and shop, okay? There was no Whole Foods, you know? You had to go out and collect your food. So your life was spent in trying to find a place to live that could give you shelter, but then getting enough food to survive, okay? that was That's your day. That's your day, okay? So once you had, and in the spring, you know, it starts, the, the green starts to come out. You've got full bloom in the summer and then the fall, late fall, things that that would, would be harvested then. But then wintertime, you had very little. You could go, you can easily go 60 days without food. It's not pleasant, right? Um, but you have to have water, of course. But you could go without that. I mean, obviously, when you're done, you're going to be a lot thinner. You know, so if, you, if you're going to survive that without having food, you had to have a little bit of fat on you. So we are hardwired to crave things that are going to be higher, what's called higher caloric density. We are hardwired. That is not the problem today. You have a difficulty running the gauntlet down the road to not bypass 25 places that are going to have in, in, insane amounts of high caloric density foods that are going to be very high in oils, fats, salts, and things that are not going to be healthy for you. So we're not dealing with, we still have a caveman body, okay? But it's, we, we, we've, we've covered the food problem. And now it's the opposite. Okay. So first of all, knowing that and knowing why we are driven and why we find these foods so pleasurable is because we're hardwired for that because it meant back in the day, the difference between surviving or not surviving. Okay. So I also think of this not as a diet, but this is a lifestyle and you have to know your why. Why? 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 Let's just stop for a second and, and let me ask you. Yes, ma'am. It did. Okay. You want to troubleshoot or here? I'll let you stand. Step in. While she's doing that, what is your why? Why did you come here today? Right. Yeah. Okay. Where are the ones? Eat healthy. Eat healthy. Why? For what reason? Why? No, it's good for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. You want to be on the ground for your grave building? Yeah. We're going to do that rather than be in a nursing home. That's why. Right? Right? If we're not living longer, we're not going to slow I don't know if I shared because I got in so many lives. Okay. Go ahead. I'll get it done. Okay. Whatever. So, no problem. Um, she went in at 72, my mother in law. It was $4,000 a month. She died seven years later because the average stay in a nursing home for Alzheimer's is five to eight years. Seven years later, at 79, she died. It was $9,000 a month. Somebody shared in one of the other classes, it was like 13,000 they were paying. So are you guys putting that aside for later? So good? Yeah, trying to. Trying to? <laughs> okay, so that's good. I'd rather use that money to go like sailing or something or, you know, um, so, you know, you, you've got to start thinking about what is your why, you know, it's not too late, you know, Eric Adams, who's now the mayor of, of New York City, um, underwent, he went, he had such bad neuropathy in his feet, he had type 2 diabetes, out of control type 2 diabetes, he woke up one day, lost sight in one eye, half blind in the other eye, 
scared him so bad, such bad acid reflux, he was literally burning holes in his esophagus. That's how bad he was. He was. He went plant-based, immediately got his sight back, reversed the neuropathy, healed his esophagus. He's like, if you look at him, he's a rock star. If you look at his before and after pictures, it's just incredible. His mother, who was type 2 diabetic, on insulin, 30 years, 30 years. So from her, 19, from her 50s to she's now in her 80s, went plant-based in, in under four months, was off, like she was on like 18 medications, okay? Completely reversed her type 2 diabetes. No more meds. What? Yes. The doctors aren't telling you this either, okay? They're just going to keep handing you that script, say good luck. So anyway, you also have to understand cravings and understand what that looks like. Like when I first started going plant-based, I was like, oh my God, I'm never going to have mac and cheese again. Oh, that is just so sad. <laughs> it's just like, like, like right there. I was like, maybe this is not the best lifestyle because I like mac and cheese a lot. But what I found is mac and not cheese. That's mac and not cheese right there. Oh, uh, first time I made that, I ate four bowls. I have no shame. I was just going to say it. I ate four bowls. <laughs> Those are my French fries up there. They're made without oil and without salt. And they're so delicious. So delicious. So it's just learning what you can eat. And I make popsicles. I don't make just, it looks like just four. That's a tray that holds six, actually, popsicles. Um, I make 36 at a time. And I make different flavors and I batch cook. And I put them in the freezer. And then I've got these amazing popsicles that you think you're eating something so decadent and so like this is this can't be good for me. No, it's all amazing food, all incredible ingredients that are going to be healthy to you. So anyway, you have to understand that this is not willpower because I'd be like failing right away. Oops. And this is what I was talking about, this book by Michael Moss. He was a Pulitzer Prize research journalist, and the book is called Salt, Sugar, and Fat. And he is not a food person. He is a journalist. And he did a food expose, you know, an expose on the, excuse me, the food industry, and really found out that how much, and I, I compare this to the journey of tobacco, for those of us who smoked back in the day, when they first started introducing cigarettes, first of all, they were unfiltered. You know, and you start to smoke these things and you're like, <laughs> and they're like, oh my God, we can't have you coughing your lung out. So then they coated the tobacco with sugar and that calmed it down and you were able to inhale the smoke easy. Okay. And so it made it so that you could suck this into your lungs and keep it in and hold it. And then down the road, they started adding nicotine to this. Are you kidding me? They purposely added more nicotine to make us more addicted. And that's exactly, they're taking the play, playbook right out of the tobacco industry and they're putting it right into salt, sugar, fat. And that's what they're doing. They're absolutely 100% doing this. They're increasing the amount of fat, sugar, and salt. They have what's called the bliss point, okay? That they know that they can, have you ever had something like you're like, you tried these new chips or whatever and you're like, oh, Oh my God. And you sit there and eat the whole package because they know that. And they're purposely doing that to you purposely because they want you to buy their products. And there is that concept of the bliss point and it's real. Okay. So the food industry has literally hijacked our brains because we now crave this high level of stimulation to the point where you really can't even almost taste real food. And it's so amazing when you get away from this, this stuff that your palate will literally cleanse itself. And I grew up eating, you know, my, I was raised the way my mother was raised. We grew up, we had a big garden. We had five kids in our family and I grew up, we had, we ate a lot of our, out of our garden when we froze, froze the rest of it for the year. Um, but we always had two veg, we started with a salad, two vegetables, and then a meat, you know, for, there was never dessert. We had five kids, please. You know, wasn't going to happen. So that's how we were raised. And that's how I raised my children. But now that I understand this and I understand the impact of these foods, especially like meats, my, my son and I used to have like knockdown down drag outs over the last piece of bacon. Like we would like literally fight to the nail for that last piece. Now I cannot even stand to smell it. 
It smell it just smells so horrible. And one day I was making like five years ago, I was making my own dog food. And I would use a little bit of chicken, just more for flavoring. I'd make like six months of food in one shot. And I would cook the, the chicken smelled so bad to me cooking that I, and I kept it in one instant pot and I would start putting it outside. So it would cook outside. It was like 17 degrees outside. And it's like, yeah, that's not cooking outside. So we put it in the garage. And my husband went out, he didn't know I was doing this. And he went out to the garage. He's like, honey, I think the septic backed up into the garage. Cause it's just like, no, I'm just cooking chicken. That's how bad it smells to us now. And it's not because like, oh my God, we're like these crazy people, you know, oh my God, militant rights can't have, you know, I'm going to throw, you have a leather coat on, I'm going to throw paint on you. And that, no, it's just that our tastes have changed that much. And now like when I go to, I call my family the carnivores because I'm the only one who's changed. The only one, like from my food, my whole family are food addicts. Like anytime we're together, we're eating from the time we get together till the time we leave. Like seriously, and everything in between. That's it. That's our activities is we eat. And it's this unofficial competition to see who can bring the most high calorically dense food that's going to be the worst possible thing for you. They were wrapping bacon around cream cheese, around sausages. And I'm like, oh, oh, oh my God. I'm just like looking at this going, wow, are we going to make it out of here alive or what? Like, is how many people are going to have heart attacks today? Anyway, they've hooked us. The average American eats 33 pounds of cheese and somebody's eating more because I'm not eating that, okay? Same thing with the, the sugar, right? Somebody's eating more because I'm not, you know? And then salt, oh my gosh. My husband and I went to one of those places where, you know, kind of like a Mexican thing where you can, I want this and this and this and this and you go down the line. Well, they had an app that you could see like the nutrition information. And thank goodness the line was long because we were on the road and I said, you know, they've got beans, they've got rice. I can have that. And then some salad, some salsa, just be fine. I'm like, if I eat this, we'll, I will need to eat this in the emergency room parking lot because the amount of salt that I would have ingested in one, one meal was two and a half times daily nutritional requirements for salt. Two for, for the day, two and a half days of salt in one meal. I wouldn't eat that in a year. Never mind in one meal. That would have put me right in the hospital. Honestly, the, my blood pressure goes like that when I have salt. So anyway, this is not our fault, but it is our responsibility. And please understand the difference. We have to take charge because the food industry and our government is not. They're subsidizing things that are going to be totally unhealthy for us, like the dairy industry. Like, okay, think of it this way. We're consuming the lactating fluid of another species. First of all, do you know any other species that would consume another species lactating fluid? That's to take a baby cow from 60 pounds at birth to 600 pounds in six months, give or take a day or two. That's what that's to do. It's growth. It helps to go growth. That's not what we need. We don't need that. And it's going to encourage things like cancer to grow. It's a growth. It has growth hormones in it. We just don't need it. We're not baby cows. Last time I checked, we're not baby cows. So consuming that lactating fluid is, is, and cheese, oh my God, that's even worse. So I did a whole series. There's a book called The Cheese Trap. And it's written by Dr. Neil Barnard. And on my YouTube channel, I have a YouTube channel, Gene Schumacher, Simply Plant Based. You go on there. I took the book and broke it apart. And I got Neil, the author of this. This is, he's an incredible doctor. And we broke this apart into, I think it's like a six, seven part series. And we dove deep. We dove deep into conversations on this and it after you and it's not that the book is gross or anything but after you read this you're like i'm good <laughs> no more tea i'm fine i'm fine but look at the brain of a normal person down here okay you can see down here that's a normal person look at somebody on cocaine and then look at somebody who's on sugar okay that's what we're talking here okay 
Sugar is just as addictive and things that are highly processed to us that are very high in sugar, okay? My husband came home and I had, had, and it takes a while for me to calm my brain down, literally. So I had been pretty good on a straight path. And my husband comes home one night and he brings this little bag of nuts. Now they were raw, so there was no oil, no salt. And it had some high quality chocolate in this little bag of nuts or this bag. And, and for the average person, that would have been fine. But he says, you know, you've been really working so hard at this and I'm so proud of you. You deserve a treat. And he opens my hand, he pours this bag into my hand. And I ate, my eyes lit up like, oh, oh, this is all, oh. And I ate it like, you know, and then immediately I'm like, there are more? Do you have any others? Because it was just a little bag. I'm like, do you have any more? He's like, well, I might have another one in the car. I'm like, you might, you might, you don't know? I would have inventory, you know, in my head of every, every high caloric thing that is in my house. I have an inventory. You know, I know exactly where it is. So every night for about a week after that, hi, honey. Did you bring home any more of those bags? It took about a week to calm my brain down. Just from that one, one bag. And some of these things can actually literally spiral you out of control. I have a girlfriend who is three days older than I am. And I purposely point out to her that. And at 50, I'm 63. So and she had her first heart attack stroke at, at 50. And she's type 2 diabetes and a lot of massive other health issues. So after her first stroke, I went over to her house. I bought groceries. I bought books, cookbooks. I bought pans. And I said, and I showed her the movie Forks Over Knives. If you've not seen Forks Over Knives, you, you have homework for this weekend. That's your homework. Forks Over Knives. Okay. That will blow you out of the water. Okay. I've probably seen the movie more than 50 times. And every time I see it, I see, get another. It's like, wow, why didn't I get that for the first 49 times that I've seen this movie? Because it's, it's very information dense. Anyway, we watched the movie. I taught her how to cook. I spent the weekend with her. And she did fine. For about six months, she got off from diabetes medication. She felt better than she had ever felt for years. She went out riding on her motorcycle with her. I don't even know what you want to call him. I, anyway, him. She went out with him for a bike ride, motorcycle ride. And they stopped at this place called Blackie's, which is renowned for their hot dogs. And that was it. It spiraled her out of control. And that was it. She never looked back, even though she had made such amazing progress in her health. There's some things that just spiral you out of control and it will take time for your brain to calm back down after eating these foods that are just so highly processed and so high caloric density. So, and we've already talked about like 10,000, 5,000, 10,000 years ago, what would you have found in nature that was high in fat? There was very few things and it meant the difference between life or death. Okay. Now today it is still life or death, but not in that way. <laughs> it's death because we're, we're consuming way too much of this stuff, way too much. And if you look around, the obesity epidemic is real. It is real. Okay. It's at, it's, it's out of control, right? So moving on, um, I normally do cooking demos and things like that, but obviously not in the library. Um, but so I did the next best thing. So this is how do you make it? And this is part of what I call the plant-based academy is I provide cooking videos just like this. You can't find them any other place. So we're gonna learn how to make simply stew.
absolutely delicious. And I do that with um, when I do live cooking demos and classes like that. Uh, the smell is just phenomenal that it's just wafting through. And I think, and if you've not seen, this is my Instant Pot right here. And the reason why I have it here is because literally we're getting in the car and going right to the potluck, <laughs> like we're driving there. So I've got not that food, but this is a soup. My husband made that yesterday. It was a sweet potato miso hot pot uh, soup. And so it's, it's keeping warm right now. And this thing, um, I recommend not one, but two, okay, of, of Instant Pots. And get the same size. That's the name of it. Called it's called Instant Pot, right? You can make yogurt. You can cook beans. You can cook rice. You can steam in it. You can saute. It's just like a pressure cooker. It, it's more than a pressure cooker. It is a pressure cooker, but it's more. You can, it's a slow cooker. It is cooked soup. It cooks rice. It, it, beans, you know, grains. It's just incredible. And what I love about it is you walk away. You put the stuff in and you walk away, okay? And and you come back and it's done. And it's amazing. So anyway, so that's why that's here. <laughs> it's because literally I'm getting in my car and driving right to the pot one. So find those what appear to me to be ingredients I don't, I don't see. Find red lentil, green lentil. Grocery store has them. Yeah. You're just not seeing them. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, and, but the other thing that I do is I ordered, I ordered online a lot. There's, it's called Shiloh Farms, Shiloh, like S-H-I-L-O-H, farms, dot, I think it's dot com. They have amazing greens, things that you have never heard of. And I just did, and Brewster is going to be putting it on their YouTube channel. I just did a, a lecture on whole food, whole grains versus processed grains and the issues. So if you're interested and want to learn more about grains, boom. But Shiloh Farms has amazing, amazing produce. And it has, you can buy in bulk, you know. So I just order it and it shows up. I like this. It's great. But anyway, it's learning how it's a, it's a culinary journey. I mean, people think like, oh, my God, it's like, what do you eat? Like grass clippings, tree bark? No, I save that for special occasions. But the, the variety of what I'm eating now, it beats everything back in the day when I was just eating. Because, you know, I eat so much more variety now and the, the, the dishes are endless, endless. And I keep coming up with new things. That's a standard question in my house because I'll be making something. I'm like, so honey, what do you think? You just make again? He's like, yeah, this is good. Or like, oh my God, the dog didn't even eat that one, you know? You get to learn what your palate likes and enjoys, and then you start to cook along that way. So anyway, first cardinal rule of this lifestyle is never go hungry. Because if you're hungry, all bets are off. All bets are off. You can talk yourself into anything, anytime, anywhere. Right? So the first thing is to be prepared. And that is what I call. I call it shop, chop, and prep. So usually around Fridays, Friday morning, whatever, I'll pick what recipe that recipes we're going to batch cook. And I make sure I go down the list and see what I need at the grocery store. Then we go shopping. Then we come home and prep those things like the, the sweet peppers. We'll cut them and wash them and put them out to air dry. Moisture is not your friend when you're washing vegetables. You want them to air dry before you put them into the refrigerator because any moisture is going to make it go cook. And in, in, like, especially greens, going to make them, they'll like melt right in front of you, like in, especially berries, things like that. You really want them to air dry. So be, you know, and then on Sundays, we'll spend a couple of hours in the kitchen cooking. And then I say, cook once, eat many times. So we've prepared food for pretty much the whole week so that I can just come up, get up in the morning and take stuff out of the refrigerator. And I put it into what's called a mini hot, I work from home now. So I put it into what's called a mini hot, log, mini hot logic, and it's a warming tray oven that is phenomenal. And we use it, we use it in the car, we're traveling, we, it connects into the cigarette lighter, you can heat it up that way. So we can have, a, I like a hot meal, personally myself. So I put it in and it heats it up. So by the time I'm hungry, I have a hot meal ready for me to go. So then I have no excuses, right? Because if you're hungry and there's not anything made, well, let's go out to eat, come on. And it's easy, right? 
So that's my refrigerator at the end of Sunday. Everything's prepped, ready to go. So I can just pull things right out and ready to roll. That was my, um, I, I carry a cooler. When I, back in the day when I was working, I mean, not from home, but I had to go into school, that I would pack everything into a cooler. And as soon as I got to school, I would take my food out and I'd lay it out just like that. And I'd take a picture of it and then I'd put it up on Instagram so people could see what I was eating for the day, right? And so that just gives you and shows you what was in my food. So there's um, blueberries back here. I had an apple. These are my nuts, what I call my omega-3, omega-6 nut bowl. And then I put that onto my salad. There's some salad dressing back there. I have some celery, some cucumbers, or not cucumbers, carrots, some peas. Oh my God, Trader Joe's has the English peas that I can just open them up and eat, pop them in like I'm eating M&Ms. Oh, they're so delicious. It takes me back from when my dad grew beans or peas. They never made it into the house, never, because I was always out eating them. Ran off the vine. It was so good. So anyway, and then some kind of this is like a beans, bean, corn, rice dish, something like that. So I may eat all this food during the day. I may not. Depends upon if I get to it, you know, if I have kids in my face or whatever. Um, but I never went up to the cafeteria to eat because that was dangerous. Warning, Will Robinson. Danger. Danger. So I never went up there, but I carried a cooler. And that's one of the things you have to carry your food with you. So I recommend a cooler somewhat like this. It's got a pouch in the front that you can put napkins and silverware. They have pockets on the sides so that you can put your canteens. And I took one of the nicer ones. They have ones we got to go to the beach that are just beat up to be in the band, you know? So I always carry these and I have, and I drink my own water. I have, if you're concerned about water, uh, that's a whole other conversation. I've been studying it for over 25 years. At our house, we have a four-stage filtration system dealing with the things that are in the Brewster. I live in Brewster, the Brewster Town Water. And then um, it goes through a four-stage filtration system, which gets most of the particles out. And then it goes up to what's called an ionizer, a conga machine. It, I can change the pH of my water with one a touch of one button. And I use it for different things. So depending upon what I'm what I'm doing with the water. Anyway, um, but I carry my own water and that has right now that has lime in it, lime juice. That's very alkalizing to the body. So the whole nother thing. So whole nother conversation. Also the other coolers that I like have this, another package or place on top. So I put things like warm things that go up on top and then I put cool things on the bottom. So it just made it really easy. The one criteria that I had to have for the cooler, it had to be tall enough to fit my canteens in it, you know, so. Um, to take care of that. So that's for step one is never go hungry. So the other thing is to batch cook. And so this would be something that I'd be preparing. So this is some kind of dish, you know, like a stew, um, some salads. I have some steamed kale. Notice that that's only prepared for two days. That's for my husband and I, two days. You can't steam kale any more than that because other it just flames out. It just disintegrates so quickly. Same thing with berries, um, uh, carrots, same thing. Celery, I could make for at least three days that it would stay. And I would always have in my refrigerator at all times, some kind of grain, some kind of potatoes, sweet potatoes, white potatoes, um, some kind of beans, lentils, something like that. I would batch cook them so that they're ready and I could pull them out and have a dish prepared and made, made dinner in under 10 minutes. Okay, because you're, all you're basically doing is reheating up and adding whatever you're going to add to it. So it just makes it. You know, I call it chop, chop, prep, cook once, eat many times, okay? Because I'm very, very busy. I I, <laughs> I teach full time and I do this on, on my side, you know, in my spare time. And then I'm lecturing. I have a YouTube. I have, I do a lot. So um, anyway, so never, never, ever go hungry. The first step is to create a wellness center. And this is what you're shooting for. No one's going to be this perfect, this is what you're going for and, and trying to get to is to get foods that are in their natural state that have been dried, you know. Um, but the first step is to clean out the refrigerator because if it's in your refrigerator, if it's in your house, you're going to be using it. So get rid of the cheese, get rid of the dairy, get rid of the sour cream, get rid of the butter, get rid of all that stuff that is not helping you to achieve health. Done. Clean that out, get rid of it, and then start replacing it with good foods. Okay, 
Um, you want to get good pots and pans. We'll talk about that in a minute. But the biggest piece is to create your wellness center. And that starts in your kitchen. Boom. Okay. You've got to have that done. Right. So that's step one. And then once you clean it out, then you're going to start wanting to replace it with things that are, and just look at the colors on this. Are they not just so beautiful and vibrant? Our eyes, and if you stop and think about it, our eyes have can only register a very narrow part of the electromagnetic spectrum. <laughs> think about that. And it's only the frequencies that vibrate and reflect and show in our eyes as color, because that was how we can tell the difference between a ripe strawberry and a not ripe strawberry. I don't need to sneak up on a strawberry, period. I don't have to sneak up and hide and catch it because it's there, okay? It's, it's in nature. So that's what our eyes are for. That's why we see color, okay? That resonates with me. Even before, you know, I went plant-based. I'm like, that's beautiful. That is just gorgeous, you know, just looking at that. So, uh, sorry. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. like right. Well, it's just keeping keeping moisture away from them and putting them on, you know, putting paper towels, you know, after you've washed and let them air dry, then, you know, putting them on paper towels. They never last that long in my house. The berries. That's my new crack. You know, it, it really is. Um, but the other fruits, you know, it's berries that are the worst, you know, uh, bananas stay pretty well, you know, oranges are in their own package, you know, apples do pretty well. Yeah, um, find the berries in the yes, that go so quick. So you got, you just, got, you know, have those, you just have to buy in small quantities, you know, you can't bat, you know, like, oh, they're on sale three for $5, you know, you no, know, you, you just stick with one because unless you're going to be making something with them. You know, so anyway, um, hummus becomes your new mayonnaise. That's your new mayonnaise. And you don't want to get hummuses at the store because they're going to be filled with oil and salt. It's ridiculously easy to make your own hummus. You take a can of chickpeas, <clears throat> dump it into the Cuisinart, okay? Then add a little bit of tahini, which is ground up sesame seeds. And then whatever else that you would like to add to that, to the flavor profile, you can do so many things. Yes. Well, I use recipes. Oh, absolutely. Yep. So the question that I was just asked was, how do you preserve your berries and keep them without disintegrating? You're welcome. So um, basically just making sure that mo no moisture. Absolutely. And paper towels to help to absorb that. But they berries never last that long in my house. Anyway, hummus is your new best friend. So learn how to make your own hummus. And I'll never forget Again, it's coming to learning how to read nutrition labels. And I was just talking with her about scheduling this. This is a very interactive, hands-on activity. And this is going to be a dynamite room to do this in. It's to learning how to read nutrition labels because they're going to be hiding things in you know, plain sight. So um, anyway, I was at, at a Whole Foods. We were traveling. And this guy, and I was like, oh, my God, none of these. I don't recognize any of these because they're different labels or whatever. Not labels, but different brands. And so I'm looking and I'm, I'm picking them up and I'm looking at the labels and I'm reading each one, reading each one, reading each one. And this guy is standing there watching me. And finally, after I'm like, mm, maybe and he's like, OK, so he goes, all right, so which one's the best? <laughs> you know, after he saw me reading every label. So I said to him, well, this one is going to be the best because it doesn't have oil. And this woman was walking by and she heard the co my comment that it doesn't have oil. And she said, well. I'm a medical doctor and you have to have oil in your diet. And I just looked at her point blank and said, could you tell me where you're practicing so I don't go there? <laughs> her face, you would have thought I just shot acid into it. You know, her face was just like, oh, how you know, dare you? I'm a doctor. I know everything, you know? And I'm like, you need to check up on your research, honey. Because, you know, and that's what bothers me is that some of these doctors tend to think of themselves as God and, you know, I know everything. And it's like, no, you don't. There's so much information that's coming out. And it's so fast with the Internet. You can't hide anything now. So anyway, hummus, new best friend. 
and learning how to make it. Trader Joe's has what's called corn and wheat tortillas because it's really difficult to find a tortilla that is still supple, you know, that bends, that still tastes good, okay, that has no oil in it and like almost, no, I don't think there's very little salt. So they have a corn and wheat tortilla that is phenomenal. They actually have also corn tortillas, three ingredients. that has corn, lime, and water. That's it. In their tortillas. And that's what I use to make Mexican lasagna. So uh, my husband, <laughs> I'll be like, honey, what do you want this week for lunch? It's like Mexican lasagna. I'm like, we're on week 37. I can make other things. Nope, it's good. Next question. So he really likes that. So anyway, um, having something like that, the corn and wheat tortillas and without oil and of course salt. And then we batch cook and make things like steel cut oats and keep that in the refrigerator. So you can just pull that out. It makes a great snack, especially for my teenagers. <laughs> Back in the day, um, my son was th thought this was a great snack. Absolutely perfect snack. And so we, I had counted those all out for us for breakfast and like, we're getting down to like Thursday and it's like, oh my God, where did all this, <laughs> there's no more. Oh yeah, I was eating them. I'm like, oh, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, and learning to find, you know, um, breads that are going to be good for you. Ezekiel makes the best, um, but that tends to be very dense breads that a lot of people don't like because we're used to the Wonder Bread, you know, generation. Um, Killer Dave has a, a bread that is just phenomenal, you know, and, it, and it's soft, it's pliable, even without oil. So I just wonder how they do it. But anyway, um, getting things, you know, some of the things are still there, you know, back from back in your day, like, you know, dill relish and some of the like mustards and ketchups and pickles and things like that. Those are all plant-based. So, you know, some are going to be better than others, you know. Um, but learning to substitute like almond milk, excuse me, almond beverage, can't use the word milk, <laughs> but anyway, and keeping things like this, you know, in my refrigerator at all times, you're going to find some kind of grain, some kind of bean or lentil, uh, and roast it, you know, like roasted vegetables, things like that, that I can pull out and just reheat up and, and make quick. So that's half of this battle is having, you're going to have to deal with the food. You're going to have to deal with food. So learning how to deal with it just makes it so much easier. Let me just make sure I didn't skip one because I am not on my own computer, which just makes it hard. Yep, yep, we went through all those. Okay, good. Sorry. So in my freezer, I love like the Woodstock brand, um, but anything that's like organic, you really want to try and eat as much organic as you possibly can. And because people say to me, oh my God, I can't afford that to eat this way. And it's like, okay, wait, wait, let's stop right there. We're cutting out the most expensive things in the grocery store. You're not getting the meats. You're not getting the dairies. You're not going for the cheeses. You're not going for the processed foods. You're pretty much not going into the center aisles of the store, right? So yeah. And I look at it this way. I would much prefer to spend more money on my food than to have to spend money at the doctors. That first week that I had, and I shared my story, my trip to the emergency room, that was $30,000. And that was just for medications and some blood work. That was it. That was the only test that I had done. That was $30,000. I could think of a lot better things to do with $30,000 than a week in the hospital, just saying, okay? Anyway, having these in, I think of this as like having money in the bank. I can pull these out and I can make so many different dishes, having it right there. And it's all put, pulled in at the peak of, you know, they cut, they they harvest it, they flash freeze it, and then it goes into the, to the freezer. So nutrition is just, it's at the peak of its ripeness. These shredded hash browns, O-M-G. I could I make um, waffles, potato waffles with these uh, oh, to die for, to die for, just saying, absolutely to die for. Um, don't get behind me in Trader Joe's because I wipe out shelves, you know, like I'll just. Um, but these are delicious. 
And there's only, that's it. There's only potatoes in it. There's no oil. There's no salt. There's no other chemicals, nothing. It's just potatoes. And I don't know what they do with the, how they shred them. But I've tried to make potato waffles with my potatoes and shred them. It doesn't work. It's this. I don't know why, what they've done to it, but it's amazing. So I make those. I could eat potato waffles every day of my life. They're so delicious. And just learning to find and again, read labels and learning how to read. Like there's a company called Kabuli that makes whole wheat pizza crust that you can pull out and just throw some tomato sauce on there, pile it with veggies, and you got a pizza that to beat the band for, you know? So you're still eating foods that you understand and know. I know pizza and I love pizza. So just learning how to order and make your own foods. Again, frozen fruit, fruit, I can make so many things with that, especially a thing called nice cream. <laughs> Not ice cream, nice cream, okay? Nice cream is pretty darn amazing. Um, it's like you're eating ice cream, without question. All right, um, other things that I keep in my freezer, I have frozen ginger. It's hard and turmeric. That's ginger on the left and turmeric on the right. And I keep those because it's hard to find them in, in good, good quality. So when I find a good chunk of it, I'll buy a big batch of it and put it in the freezer and it keeps forever. And then I just grind it up. It's easier I find to grind when it's frozen to shred it and to zest it. Um, I, that's a, that's a, what's called a microplane on the left, this right here. Uh, that's great if you're taking something like, like vanilla beans and actually grinding the vanilla beans yourself. But otherwise, it's too fine to zest. I just actually use like cheese graters, and especially that, that that rectangular one that's got four different sides of great, you know, your that's what I use. Um, and I keep lemon, lime, and oranges in the freezer because you can zest those and it adds so much flavor. The whole thing, skin, seeds, everything, I zest it right up. It's amazing. It's amazing. And bananas. Anytime we always have tons of bananas. And at some point, you know, we're not eating them fast enough or I'm not cooking with them. So anything that's at that, you know, when the, the outside's starting to brown, I peel them, pop them into a plastic bag, put them in the freezer. Then I can make nice cream or popsicles or bake breads with them because bananas replace oil in baking. Okay. Applesauce or bananas replace oil. Okay. These are um, coconut milk over there. They've got these um, ice creams now that are vegan. And the word vegan, we talked about this, it, it's, it just means that there's no animal products in it. It doesn't mean that it's going to be healthy for you. And there's a lot of vegan products that are coming out that are, you know, I've dealt with a lot of very obese vegans because, you know, Coca-Cola, potato chips, and, and, cook, and Oreo cookies are all vegan. But I think we can all agree that theirs are not healthy. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so that coconut milk on the left, that coconut milk means that it's using coconuts and that has very, it's, even though it's plant-based, it's very high in saturated fat. That's what it's going to clog your arteries. If you open up a can of coconut milk, it's solid on the top. Just like when you had bacon grease back in the day um, and you let it cool down, the bacon grease would turn from a liquid to a solid. That's saturated fat. If it's at room temperature, it's solid, that's clogging your arteries. So stay away from that, seriously. Um, you know, things like sorbet, uh, ridiculously high in sugar, ridiculous. I mean, it's going to hit you like a tsunami, the sugar. It's going to raise your blood glucose. It's just not good. So it's better to make your own. Oh, my God, nice cream. So good. So good. You can't tell. Wow. And there's places here in the Cape. There's one in. Um, Sweet Izzy's in Harwich, you know, that's all vegan. The whole thing is vegan. There's another place called the Local Scoop in Orleans that has um, like soft serve plant-based ice cream. It's unbelievable. It's at, out of this world, out of this world. So that's one of our favorite places, <laughs> Local Scoop, Orleans. Yeah. So in the pantry, I love having, you know, especially these Eden organics because they have no salt added to them. Next time you're in the grocery store, take a little field trip and look around how much salt is in some of these canned products. So you definitely want to look for salt free. Okay. Pommy is amazing. They come from Italy and it's only tomatoes. That's it. Only tomatoes. 
So I use that for like the base of my tomato sauces and then just add my own seasonings and whatever. So um, Trader Joe's has a fire roasted tomato salsa, no salt added. Very difficult to find this with no salt, okay, added. So just wanted to point that out. And I have not seen it for the last couple of weeks, this, this, brand, this particular brand. Um, at Trader Joe's, I haven't seen it, so I'm kind of concerned. I'm hoping they're they're going to continue to carry it because I use that all the time in a lot of different little different recipes. Um, you want to keep, you know, onions and garlic are just massively helpful in terms of cancer prevention or or dealing with cancer. Um, changing your diet, and it's one of the things that absolutely upsets me is if you are diagnosed with cancer, they immediately put you on the medical treadmill. And they start you, and you're just so overwhelmed, you know, to get that to get that phone call that's going to change, literally going to change your life, okay? And they don't talk to you about food, they don't talk to you about nutrition, and they don't, especially, this makes me absolutely so crazy. Like women who are diagnosed with breast cancer are um, are given first round of chemotherapy is tamoxifen, and tamoxifen is rendered useless in the presence of parabens. Parabens are found in all kinds of, of personal care products, things like that. And they never tell you. I had one client who came to me that she had breast cancer. She went through tamoxifen. It didn't work. She had a double mastectomy. That's when she came to me to, to learn about health and nutrition and what she could do. And I go and do what I call it a kitchen rescue. I literally come to your house. We clean out the refrigerator. I teach you how to read nutrition labels. We go shopping. We learn. I teach you how to shop. We come home and then cook three or four things. And it's a fun, it's an all day. It's fun. But I went up to the bathroom and I said, could you bring the trash can up here? And I literally, because like on her counter, I'm like, sweetheart, this is why your tamoxifen didn't work. Everything on her counter had parabens in it. Everything. I'm like, you cannot use any of these products anymore. You have to get them out of your house. You have to get them out. And they don't talk about these toxins. Um, and that's one of the things that I've been studying for like over 25 years is these environmental toxins and how they impact us, not just the food. So anyway, I digress. But having these things like lemons, limes, sweet potatoes, potatoes, having those in your pantry, uh, huge, huge. Pasta is in a gray area, okay? Um, you definitely want to stay away from the white pastas because they have like zero nutritional value. Wheat pasta, I think, tastes not that great. Um, that's just my personal opinion. Some people love it. But usually what happens is a lot of times it goes rancid when it sits on the shelf because most people don't buy it and it sits there forever. So hmm. um, I do like the rice pasta. It tastes and looks very much like white pasta, but it, and it tastes pretty close to that. Um, so anyway, but that's a very processed food. So it's very high caloric density. So if you're trying to lose weight, not a great choice. But on a, on a whole food plant-based diet, it's totally fine, okay? And getting those grains in, in your pantry. Spices are going to be your new best friend and learning about them. There's a place, I think it's called Atlantic Spice in Truro. Uh, I'm afraid to go. I'm afraid to go there. My husband is going to consider intervention. I'm not kidding because I have like four racks in my kitchen of spices. I'm not, right? I'm not. You can have any whole food, but. No, it's true. It's true. You for that. I know he's considering intervention. He's like, if you come home with any more cookbooks or spices, we're going to do an intervention. And I'm like, okay. So I'm afraid to go to this place because I'm like, yeah. Hmm. Anyway, but spices are going to make all the difference and make this life worth worth it. I mean, like hundred um, percent. This is not about deprivation on any level. It, on any, this is not like caloric restriction. Uh-uh. No, I do not count. I don't weigh anything. I don't put portions out. I eat. I eat. And this is the first time I've ever been able to lose weight. I've lost over hundred pounds. I've healed my thyroid. I, my husband's reversed multiple sclerosis. I've healed fatty liver syndrome. Um, no more, no more migraines. I mean, I'm just in vibrant health. I'm not in pain. I move, I can move around except when I'm on the Zoom camera, I have to stay right here. So um, anyway, but so is for sweetness, what I use is basically dates. Dates are, dates are nature's candy, okay? Um, date sugar is one of my favorites to use. And don't try and buy date sugar at like at the local stores here. And I'll tell you why. Because date sugar is like brown sugar and it gets hard and like cakey, you know? So I just rather get it on Amazon 
or like from Shiloh Farms, or there's another one called Date Lady. I love hers. Um, that, that's pretty good stuff too. But it's just ground up dates. And the nutritional value of dates are like up here and like, you know, like maple syrup and honey are down here. Like it's a Jedi level. Like, like the nutritional value is just so much, so much better. Um, so maple syrup I'll use if I need a liquid to use in something like, like a, a tea. I drink tea. So I'll put a little bit of maple syrup in there for sweetness because you really can't put the date sugar because it clumps it up and it's not, doesn't work well in, in like a liquid, hot liquid like that. Um, applesauce I'll use in place of oil, applesauce or bananas, you know, mashed up works. The purpose of oil and baking is to provide the moisture. That's what the applesauce and bananas do. Okay, so these are again, higher caloric density. So if you're not dealing with weight issues, these are great. This one is my husband's favorite. It's called Moo Moo Moosley. It's organic. It's just got um, flax seeds, raisins, dates, cranberries, almonds, and coconut, and it's organic. And it comes from the state of New York. Um, we just buy it. <laughs> it's, you can't find it around here, at, at least in the grocery stores. So I just order by the box. <laughs> when we get down to the last, we get a, a, a bag of, that's like a bag of it right there. Uh, when we get down to like the last bag, I'll order just another box of 10 and go from there. So that is my husband's absolute favorite, okay? Um, and just finding cereals that are going to be, you know, whole food plant-based. But know that these are going to be higher caloric density foods. These are not for weight loss, okay? So if you have a son, you know, kids, athletes, or whatever, these are perfect, you know, for them. These, if you're, and, and there's a key word here that I use is plant strong versus plant perfect. Plant strong is somebody who's not trying to, reach, is, is in good health, that wants to maintain that good health, that is not dealing with any like heart disease or diabetes or anything else. They can then incorporate some things like tofu or some almond butter or to have a few nuts. Nuts are like calorie bombs, okay? First of all, they do contain a phenomenal amount of micronutrients, but we tend to, let me give you an example. My mother used to get for us at Christmas time, that big bag, it's like five pound bag of nuts. And she put it on the coffee table with the nut crackers and whatever. And that would sit there till like February. And the last dregs were the Brazil nuts because they, you know, no, you need a chainsaw to get those open, you know, like. So you'd, you'd crack like three walnuts and then you're like, yeah, I'm good. Now you open up the bag and you start popping them like M&Ms, you know, like if I open that bag between my husband and I, like we're on a road trip. Yeah, we'll kill that bag. And we've just ate like several thousand calories. Like, blink. oh my God, where'd that bag go? Yeah, we ate it. Wow, really? So the fat you eat is going to be the fat you wear. Okay. And fat in terms metabolically will roll right into your fat cells because they want to save it for later when you don't have food. When you were in that feast or famine stage, when you were in that famine, that's when those nuts would come in handy, that fat that you rolled into it. That's when that was going to come in handy. We don't have that problem anymore. We don't have that famine stage. So that's a big, huge problem. So these are things that are, you want to think of them as treats, okay? Rare treats because they're very high in fat, right? And then the other word, plant perfect, is somebody who is dealing with heart disease or diabetes or has to heal their body for in whatever reason, you've got inflammation or arthritis. Arthritis is just, again, it's dealing with inflammation. Once you can calm the inflammation down, these things all start to heal. It's incredible. So, you know, if you're plant perfect, you're going to stay away from these kinds of foods. You're going to stay away. Okay. So they're high caloric density foods. You're going to stay away from them until you've healed. All right. So now, this is an instant pot right here, and I can't say enough about it. I mm -hmm, have a lot of them. So um, this, and, and that right there to me just makes, it's, it's the big, this biggest difference in, in this lifestyle is having these, not one, two. And then I buy extra liners because the liner comes out, okay? Um, and this is not on steam right now, so I can open this up. So one of the things I wanted to show you is that this liner comes out. 
So you can take it out to wash it, which I love, and it's stainless steel. So this is just one of the most amazing pieces of equipment that has been recently invented. Absolutely mind blowing. Anyway, must have, must have, okay? This right here, this is an air fryer. Nice to have. And some of the ovens now are coming out with air fryers in them. And so, um, but this is nice to have. This is not a must have. This is nice to have. It's nice to be able to fry things and without oil. So my French fries don't quite look like that, <laughs> um, but that's with oil and salt. <laughs> mine don't have oil, mine don't have salt. Vitamix, must have. Not specifically a Vitamix, but you need to have a blender, high power. That blender is 11 amp base. Like the lights dim in the kitchen when I turn the blender on, okay? So you need a high power, but that can take shoe leather down to the cellular level, okay? It just blows away any other blenders. Now, there's some other blenders out there that are, are equally as good, but nothing in terms of durability, in terms of, you know, Whatever. So I don't, I'm not a rep for the Vitamix company. <laughs> Say it. I don't wear the original ones that have the reverse, instant reverse to it. Uh -huh. You're right to put a shoe in there. Yeah. And they last forever. You'll give them down to your, the what? The impact lever. Impact. It immediately rotates the blade to the opposite direction. And it's got to be 30 years old. I know. They last forever. They do. They do. And they are, they're not cheap, just saying they're not cheap, but it, it, yeah, they're worth it. Um, these, again, must have, these are silicone mats. These, and you, if you go over to Bed Bath & Beyond before they go out of business, <laughs> so it doesn't sound like they're going to be around for much longer, but you can, notice, of course, you know, order those on Amazon, but these mats just roll right out on your cookie trays and you can, nothing sticks to these. So you can you don't have to put oil or butter or anything else. Just put this mat down, boom. And now you've got you taking your cookie trays and you can cook on that now. So those are absolutely must have. And I love that they just roll up and I just put a rubber band around them and throw them in the cupboard. This is my spike. Now this is not the wood doesn't come with it. It's just the rack. I, I'm not kidding. I have actually more than this because this these these are sections. So like I have like maybe one and a half tall of those and like four of them <laughs> on my wall in my kitchen and they're full, like they're jammed in there. Um, so these are some other things I recommend. A good pan is Swiss diamond. I've test drove a lot of pans as my husband can verify <laughs> over the years. We've been married 15 years. This is round two for both of us. So um, I switched to, I bought these Swiss diamond. They're made in Switzerland. It's a different, they have different proprietary information in terms of what they can sell and what they can't. It's, it's, it's completely different over there. So from Europe, much better than here made in the United States. So um, Swiss diamond, I've had them, these pans for about five years. They're just as good as when I bought them in terms of the surface. So um, I st strongly recommend those. Uh, this one on the bottom is what's called a handheld mandolin slicer. Most mandolin slicers are like very bulky. They're going to take up so much room in your kitchen and you're never going to use them because it's a pain. Take them out, put the blade in and fight. Where'd that blade go? I can't find that other blade. Where'd that end up? You know, because they get shoved around into the cabinets. Anyway, this is a handheld. Uh, it's flat. It goes right into the drawer. I use it like almost every day. So um, that's that's a really nice to have because I use that especially for onions. Chopping up the onions just makes it so much easier. Um, that zester on top is, you know, again, like I said, it's too fine to grate things. Uh, most things, especially um, like if you're doing any kind of citrus or ginger or whatever, I just use a small like cheese grater. You know, um, so much better. Parchment paper you can then use that to line your glass dishes. Uh, so you can still use your glass dishes, you know, because before you would have to put something like Crisco around it or oil so the stuff wouldn't stick. Well, you just got parchment paper. Done. Next question. So 
Uh, I love having a pot rack in my kitchen. It just makes it easier to have everything right there and accessible instead of having to bend over and get them out and, st and stack them, you know, from, from if you're in cabinets and whatever. I just love having a pot rack. It just makes life so much easier. Okay, so those are a few of the strategies. Um, ooh, berry delight. Ah, like I said, berries are my new crack. So we're going to learn how to make berry delight. This is just a so easy, but so delicious. OMG. Just saying. Okay, here we go. Berry delight. And this is kind of like me. I'm in your face. I don't know what happened to the sound on this. I'll have to reload it. Sorry, no sound. You can see that's a bigger grater, especially for lemons. You really need to have a bigger grater because otherwise you'll be there for four days, you know, with a smaller grater. And that's it. That's how easy it is. Some people think like, oh my God, you're spending weeks, you know, making this. No, it's easy dishes, simple, easy to make. And that is so delicious. Oh my God. I could eat that every day. Oh, delicious. The lemon just makes those berries pop. It's just crazy. Okay. Before you begin this lifestyle, and I have to say this, reiterate this again especially if you're dealing with hypertension or you're dealing with diabetes, you need to connect with your doctor because once you start this, your, your body's going to heal and heal very quickly, especially if you take this seriously. Like I, one of my clients that I was dealing with, he had, he had had blood work done. His cholesterol went and he had blood work done three weeks later after he started with me. Oops, my bad. He started and his cholesterol went from 279 to 99 in three weeks. His doctor was like, there must've been an error in blood work. You know, like really? You don't give him any credit at all? Seriously? Because a doctor will never have seen that level of jump. Not with medications. Medications can't do that. Food can, okay? So your body will start to heal and heal very quickly. I kid you not. You can't do this. You have to take this serious though. Like you can't be like, I'll do a little bit here and a little bit. I mean, it's good, you know, to, to the more you do, the better you do. It's great. But especially if you're dealing with hyper, hypertension or diabetes, you, you, you have to be very strict about this because I use, I, I compare it to this way, right? I've got a good punch. I'm a pretty strong woman. I'm going to get punch. What if I come up and I hit you in the arm every day, the same place, with every ounce of fiber of energy that I've gotten, I hit you in your arm. In two weeks, what is your arm going to look like? It's going to be black and blue. It's going to be swollen. It's going to be so painful. You're not going to be able to move it. And you're going to go to the doctor and the doctor is going to be like, oh my goodness, oh, I'll give you some steroids for the, for the inflammation. I'll give you something for the pain. But if I just stopped hitting you, your arm would heal. Now, when you go plant-based, and if you are very consistent, especially if you're dealing with type 2 diabetes and or hypertension, every time I come up and hit you, okay? I, let's say I stop hitting you, and then I sneak up behind you one day, and I go, <laughs> and I hit you. in your arm, if I come up and hit you in the arm, it's going to hurt, I promise you. It's going to hurt, Okay. And it's going to take how long? And especially as we get older, it takes our body longer to heal. Have you noticed that? Have you noticed? Okay. So it's going to take your body a long time to heal from that one punch. That's what's happening when you deviate and go back and forth between a plant-based diet and then eating other things that are going to cause inflammation into your body. Okay. So it's, it's real. It's real. Okay. 
And I know for myself, I cannot have salt, can not have salt. And if I do, if I go out to a restaurant and it's going to be plant-based because I'm not, I'm not eating unless I like they sneak in something that I'm not aware of. But if I'm eating something with, with, and if you go out, you're going to have salt in it and they're going to have oil. If I eat that, it's going to take about four days for my blood pressure to come back down and it will jack up high. I'm not kidding you. High, high, high. And it'll take about four days for my body to process that one meal, one meal. Okay. So that's what happens. You know, you can't, you have to take this very serious. Like I've been good. I just a retreat. Have we all done that? Right. You're on that diet. I've been good. I need a treat. And so you deviate, you eat something that you know you're not supposed to have. Well, instead of thinking that way, think about what can I have as a treat in my plant-based world? Nice cream. Oh my God. I make a German chocolate cake. I make that only for his birthday once a year because like I could like just swim in that, you know, it's so good, but it's high caloric density and that's a treat. He gets it once a year. Okay. So there are things out there. They're higher caloric density, not meant for weight loss, but that would be, that's what I call my cheat, right? My cheat. The problem is, you know, as I say this, you need to check with your doctor before you begin this because, and you want to get a blood work. You know, you need to be doing blood work like quarterly, if not three times, you know, three times a year, four times a year, something like that. You need to do that because your blood work is like your report card, right? It's, re, it's your report. It's how, how, what's going on underneath here. And it's telling you exactly what nutrients you need. You know, I do a full, full panel, especially for new, nutrients to see if I'm deficient in anything, especially vitamin D and B12. Those are the big ones right now that everybody should be pretty much if you're living in New England, you definitely need to be checking your blood work for that to see where your levels are. Okay. So the problem though, is most doctors are not trained in nutrition. And I can tell you story after story after story of doctors, you know, and my own personal doctor, when I first started on this, um, my C-reactive protein, which is a measurement in your blood, it measures inflammation. And it's a very, it's one of the basic indicators of heart disease. And my C-reactive protein was off the charts. And she just basically sat down and said to me, look, you're, you're on track for a heart attack. And I'm like, okay. So this was in the beginning when I was changing it. And I said, I'd like to redo my blood work in you know, a couple of months. And she's like, why? I said, well, I want to see what changes, like especially the C-reactive protein. I want to see if I can get it down. And she's like, no, it won't come down. It will never come down. Once it gets this way, that's it. You, I've never seen it come down until now. And then... And she kept arguing with me, like the insurance company is not going to cover that. And like, okay, humor me. I'll pay for it. If I have to pay out of pocket, I'll pay out of pocket. But just be ready. I want to do this again. It's like, okay. Blood work came back. And guess what? Wonder of wonders. My C-reactive protein was way down, way down. Her response was, well, it was probably bad blood work the first time. Are you, I get no credit at all? She's like, no, because I've never seen C-reactive protein come down. That, and then when my thyroid started going, she immediately put me on synthetic thyroid. And she handed me the prescription and said, you know, handed it to me. And, and I looked at it and it had four refills circled on the bottom. And I'm like, how, how long am I supposed? supposed to be on this and she's like she looked me straight in the eye and said forever it's to be the rest of your life no i no i don't do drug i'm not a drug person no no i can't no i've never seen anybody heal their thyroid once it goes never just can't do it until now i loved showing her up I did. And, and she would blame it a lot on bad tests, blood work. I got no credit. So you can do this. It is probably one of the best things that I've ever done in my life. I cannot lie. I have no pain. I feel amazing. I, 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 and I, when I stop and think about before I went, because I'm in a, I'm in, Dr. Neil Barnard has a book called Your Body in Balance, which is all about your thyroid. 
okay, and keeping homeostasis within your body. And I'm one of the case studies for him. And I remember talking to him about this when, you know, we were at a conference and I said, so Neil, what's your next book? And he's like, well, I'm talking about your, you know, your thyroid. And I'm like, oh my God. And I'm like, and he's like, how people can heal it. I'm like, that was me. And he's like, you're kidding. And I'm like, no. And so he made me go to my doctor and, and, and I said to her, I would like to come and see my file. And she's like, what? I said, I want to see my file. My sediment, my file was like this thick. I've been with her for like 10 years. Like my file was like this thick. And as I was flipping through and I was taking pictures and documenting everything I took with my camera, with my cell phone and camera, and then I was sending them to, to Neil because he wanted to verify, you know, and, and doc document my journey, you know. And so I'm looking through this file going, and I always thought of myself as pretty healthy. And I'm like staring at this file of just like test after test. And I'd be going in and I'd be sick with the flu and this and that. And I'm like going, I was never healthy, was I? You know, it's just, it was just like one of those come to Jesus moments, you know, like this reality hit me hard that I was not healthy, you know, and I would get, and it says, a teacher, you have kids coughing, hacking, sneezing on you all day long, all day long. That was one of the cardinal rules of the first sneeze of the year in my classroom. I would immediately show, stop my class, stop my lecture, and we would watch a sneeze in slow motion. And I, and, and the kids are like, I don't do that. And I'm like, you do but it's happening so fast because when you sneeze, it's like it's coming out of you at hurricane levels. A cough is like at tornado levels. The sneeze is like hurricane. I'm like, yeah, you do. And so here's what we're going to do from this point on. And so when they saw the particles, they were absolutely, you know, whatever, kids, you know. And I said, here's what we're going to do is you're going to pull up your shirt and you're going to sneeze into your shirt. Okay, we got it. And then and we take one or two more times and the kids would all be like, Pull your shirt up, you know, because they're like, they remembered seeing it. And I had the whole school trained, the whole school, you know, because they would, they usually had me as a freshman, you know. So anyway, um, you can do this, honestly. It's probably one of the, going to be one of the best things you've ever done. And especially if you have children or grandchildren, you can start teaching them because it's going to be a complete reversal of everything that you've learned. It's going to take time. Okay. Um, week one, just start with breakfast. Just replace your breakfast. Okay. Week two, replace breakfast and lunch. And week three, do breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then by week four, you're going to be on autopilot, right? And I say to you with all sincerity, try it for 30 days. You know, you don't have to make this a lifestyle. Bless you. Sure? Thank you. <laughs> no, no, no. We had that conversation. Not in the arms. Because it reflects off and da, 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 da. pull up your shirt. And, yeah, sneeze into it. Okay. Anyway. So, anyway, but you can complete this. Okay. Do we have a question or? We do have a question. Yes. My question are a question. Where can you purchase Kabuli Pizza Crust? Where can you go? A Kabuli Pizza Crust is made, it's called Kabuli. You have to buy them in bulk. OK, so you can get your store to buy them. They come from a place and I can't remember in Texas, but you can Google Kabuli Pizza Crust and find the company. But you have to order from the company if you buy like like, I don't know, like 10 or something like that at a time. So I just put them in the freezer, you know, when I would buy them and throw them in. So just. Yes, ma'am. I think I've gotten all the rest of it. And they do sell, I see Swiss Diamond on Amazon. Yes, they do sell Swiss Diamond on Amazon. And sometimes you'll find they have a price, you know, like a package of them and they're cheap. Oh my God, I couldn't believe the price because individually they're they're a little pricey, the pans. They're, you know, range like, you know, about $100 or so about a pan. And I found a, a package of 10 for like three, $400. It was, I was like, what a score. My daughter's getting that for Christmas. So anyway. Um, by the fourth week, it, you can roll into this. 
And once you get on, on autopilot, I don't even think twice now. I'm so on autopilot. It's just the beginning is a little bit of a learning curve. You have to learn how to read nutrition labels. That's, you know, one of the things we're going to be doing next in the next lecture is going to be tips and tricks and cooking hacks. And I'm going to teach you a couple of of the basics of reading a nutrition label. There's a lot more to it than, than what I'm gonna teach you, but they're hiding things in plain sight. It's smoke and mirrors. It really is absolutely insane. Um, that's okay. There's one more here. Oh, okay. It's just people signing off. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, no problem. So the next class is going to be tips and tricks and great cooking hacks. And I'm talking with Lisa about scheduling some other classes coming up, especially the label reading one. That's kind of important. Then, then I have a whole series on how to avoid dementia. Um, that's one of my big things. That's one of my, when I asked you earlier, what's your why? That's my why. I don't want to be in the nursing home. It took me this long to get up here to Cape Cod full time. And I made it. I'm here. This is my happy place, okay? And so I want to be out kayaking and hiking and biking and walking the beaches till the day I pass from this planet. I do not want to be in a nursing home and I do not want to be on the medical treadmill. So that is my why, big why, okay? So we talked about that. Um, oh, if you are looking for a doctor, again, I have, all I get is brownie points. <laughs> I have no other connections because I know most of these other, most of the doctors that are at plant-based telehealth and I've done quite a few interviews. You can see on my YouTube channel, I've got a lot of interviews out there, um, especially whatever you're dealing with. I probably have a YouTube inter interview about it. But um, plantbasedtelehealth.com is if you're looking for a doctor that can guide you through, they're certified in all 50 states. And so they've got one doctor somewhere in, you know, whatever state that you're, you're dealing with. So, um, you know, again, we talked about that. And that's the movie that we're going to be seeing from Food to freedom um, in May, in Feb May 7th at seven o'clock in Dennis. So I hope you can join us with that. If you're looking for products that are toxic free, please connect with me because I found a company and I do, I'm a consultant for that company. It's all I use. They meet my standards in terms of being toxic free because that is something that I've been studying for like 25 years. I was that chemistry teacher that I would make my kids, my students like, Okay, who wants to have a winter mid chemistry midterm exam or do a project? And the kids are like, I don't care what the project is, I'm in, you know. And I would make them do a chemical analysis of three personal care products. And they're, they just like, they were never the same after because the chemicals and they're hiding things in, in plain sight. Like, for example, my girlfriend, very careful about what she buys. She, she called me up. She said, you home? And I said, yeah. She said, can I pop over? I said, absolutely. Come on. She comes over. She says, look at my, she, under her armpit. It was fire engine red. It was so inflamed. I'm like, what? Okay. What are you using for deodorant? She said, I knew you were going to ask. And she pulled it out and she was so proud of this deodorant. And it was like one of those uh, crystal deodorants. And I turned around and on the front, it said, you know, no parabens. No this, no sulfur, no sulfites, no, you know, aluminum chloral hydrate, no this, no that, you know. And on the back, I turned around and I looked and the first ingredient was aluminum. And I said, you do know this has aluminum in it. And she says, no, it doesn't. It says right here on the front. I said, no, no, no. Let's be clear. It has no aluminum chloral hydrate. Okay. So that's the most common form that you're going to find in deodorants. On the back. The first ingredient was potassium alum. They could use the common name and in parentheses after it, it said mineral salts. And I said, this is it right here. That's short for potassium aluminum silicate. And I thought her head was going to spin around. I mean, she was just like hor horrified that she'd been. And I said, that's why your, your armpit is like on fire like that. And she said, but it's in parentheses. It says that the mineral salt, is that good? And I said, Okay, arsenic's a mineral salt. I prefer not to use it. Um, thank you. Um, I don't know if my husband gets out of control, maybe, but you know, but no, in terms of my deodorant, I don't want arsenic, you know, either. But I said, no, what they're doing is they're hiding this in plain sight. So um, this company is made from, is made here in the United States. It's in Rhode Island. 
And actually the same family that started this company is now has started Plant City in Providence, Rhode Island. If you've not been there, it's the first plant-based market hall in the country. They took and gutted a, a, a warehouse on the river and they restored this beautiful area. Because I remember driving over Providence like in the 60s going, God, what a shithole. Hope I never go there. Um, anyway, but they've done, and it's gorgeous. Oh my God, they just did an amazing. difference in my life, about our lifetime. Yeah, night and day, night and day. And it's absolutely gorgeous. And yeah. And Plant City's right on the river and it's just absolutely gorgeous. And there's four plant-based uh, restaurants. They have a community center in the basement where I've done a lot of classes and teaching there. Um, and then they have a coffee bar, they have a little shopping area, they have outside that you can go and sit outside and eat. And it's just amazing. It's the same family that started this company, started Plant City. They were supposed to open up um, 10 of these marketplaces a year for 10 years, and then COVID hit. <laughs> so that derailed it. Uh, National Health Association, I would be remiss if I didn't mention them. They have been promoting a whole food plant-based lifestyle, salt, oil, sugar-free since 1948. This is their 75th year of promoting it. They do need a better publicist because no one knows about them, but they have been promoting this. They have a conference that is absolutely out of this world. It's in June. I will never miss it till the day I pass from this planet because it is, to me, like going to Mecca and just, you know, reaffirming my beliefs in this and just the, the amount of science that comes out it's all cutting edge science from the year before that has happened over that year uh, you also get from membership it's 35 dollars a year they have a membership um, that you get quarterly this magazine health science and it's absolutely gorgeous you can't get it in, on the newsstands any place the only way you can get it is through membership and i just want to point out <laughs> right there it says how toxic are your personal care products that is me i made the front cover that was the last magazine Anyway, just wanted to point that out. Uh, I cannot say enough that there's no advertising in this magazine. They always have recipes in the back, but it's always cutting edge what's happening, um, what's going on. And with your membership, they have login on their website, do recipes, bit interviews, podcasts. I mean, it's just, it's for $35, it's, it's insane. They, you know, everybody does it. Everybody that's involved with it, it's, it's all volunteer, Okay. So um, do please do connect. If you're on Facebook, there is, um, we are now an official pod for Plant Pure Nation. So what does that mean? Well, we have group, group gatherings and literally as soon as we're done here, I'm like scooting over. We're over in South Yarm or in Yarmouth. At, what is it? Blue, Blue, Blue Rock Heights, something like that. We're at the community clubhouse there. Um, one of the members has access to that. So we're gonna be there for dinner. Um, and so we're, there's two Facebook groups, plant-based Cape Cod, and then green nosh Cape Cod, you know, either one of those groups, um, Joanne started this when she came up, Joanne is my co-partner, uh, co-leader in the group. And she has been plant, oh my gosh, a long time, but she is what's called physicians committee for responsible medicine. She's completed the food for life courses. And so she does a lot of work with cancer people, um, and changing, helping people to, to deal with that. I'm also doing a, um, Dr. Michelle Tollison asked me, she is one of the big poo-poos in the American College of Lifestyle Medicine that certifies medical doctors. Um, she is a medical doctor herself and teaches uh, other doctors. And she asked me to co-work with her uh, on this trip to Costa Rica. So see if you're looking for an immersion, this is gonna be a week long immersion in Costa Rica at one of the blue zones. Blue zones are areas in the world that are 100%, they, that, that these areas that people lived continually into their late 90s, early 100s, that they, their mind is intact, their body's intact, they're no, in no pain, they have no health issues, they live right up until the day, they usually pass quietly in their sleep, and you know, they're up one day and then the next day they pass. And that's how I want to go. You know, that's what I want to do. Anyway, we're going to the Costa Rica. We're going into one of the blue zones there and meeting with some of the people. And uh, I'm in charge of food. So <laughs> I'm trying to make Costa Rican dishes. You know, the chef, it's a Michelin trained chef. It's a five-star hotel and all this good stuff. So if you're looking for a great adventure, 
Um, the, Michelle started telling me about, like, there's this thousand foot volcano that they've got this water slide that they built on the side of it. I'm like, okay, I'm in on that one. And she's like, okay, but then there's these mud baths. I'm like, no, you can leave that activity, Michelle. You can go do, I don't want to put mud all over me. No, you can go do that one. She's like, oh, but it was so much fun. Good. You leave that one. Anyway. All right. Questions. <laughs> 